Embu County is well placed to allow for surgical measures to mitigate food insecurity due to its diverse agroecological zones that allow the growing of many crops that include maize, beans, sorghum, root crops, horticulture and industrial crops mainly coffee, tea, macadamia and cotton. Apart from the conventional agriculture, Many households have embraced the production of agricultural products using modern technologies such as greenhouses, water harvesting and drip irrigation for high crop value crops. The benefits accruing from these new technologies will go a long way in increasing farm incomes and improving the livelihoods of the county citizens. On today's episode of Mizizi, we feature Wawera Njue and Linda Kamau. The two partners met at a reality show called Miss President, which featured on KTN Home. Their friendship was not to split at the end of the season, as they sat to figure out what they could do together based on the fact that they both came from Embu. They finally settled for sweet potato farming. Ah, my name is Wawera Njue. We are in Embu County, Bere South constituency. Uh, this is Gashorere area. Uh, this is our farm. We are doing sweet potatoes. We planted this potato, sweet potato sometime in September and we are hoping that uh, we'll be able to harvest the same by end of December and in January. Um, we did just start here. We started, we have another farm where we propagated the fines because again it was not very easy to get fines for, lunge, for such a lunge, uh, area so we have propagated in another two acres area and that is why we are able to get the fines to do the planting. Wawera Njue is a teacher by profession and served for 17 years till 2017 and Linda is an ICT practitioner by profession who worked for eight years, quitting her job in 2016. The two partners truly enjoy what they do but this didn't just happen. A mind-boggling session was necessary to come up with a business idea and a business plan. Experts always teach us on a few things that are necessary to consider before setting up a business plan, such as writing things down about yourself, things you like and things that you don't like, if you are a problem solver or if you like coming up with business concepts and so on. Linda and Wawera went through the stage and they share the things they had to consider before setting up the sweet potatoes farm. Professionally, I'm not a farmer. I'm a teacher, high school teacher. I've taught for 17 years until I retired in 2017. I, this year, uh, in January, I joined a program that was aired on KTN, Miss President, and that is where I met my partner, Linda. And um, we interacted, we talked, and we asked ourselves after Miss President what we'd do together. We looked at uh, the, the things we had in common, and we thought agriculture was the best. So we decided to venture into farming. We looked around um, several crops until we settled on sweet potatoes for various reasons. Uh, that uh, sweet potatoes is not very labor demanding compared to other crops. Also looking at uh, the way our nation feeds. Right now everybody is like, we want to go back to the traditional foods and we thought, why not sweet potato? Again, sweet potato, you can play around with it. You can do value addition, you can do the flour, you can boil just the tubers and eat. And we thought, yeah, this is where we need to be. I've been farming since 2016. And uh, formally, I'm trained in the ICT industry. I've been an ICT technician for an international NGO for eight years. And in 2016, when I left my job, I wondered what else can I do? Because I was tired of the corporate rat race. I felt I should look for something different. I had worked for only one company since I cleared college. And I thought, let me spread my wings a little bit, go out there and see what is out there for me. Well. Still at home at my mother's place, I met a cousin who was doing farming in Moya and she told me to, she invited me to come to her place and see what they are doing. And when I came to Moya, I thought this is something I can do. Even though I don't have any experience in farming, I've been, I was born and raised in Nairobi, lived in Nairobi all my life. And when I came to Moya, saw what they are doing, the opportunities to create employment, the opportunities to earn, I thought farming is a place I should, uh, I can do well in. 
Sweet potato plants has numerous utilizations besides the tuber, sweet potato vines are a rich source of nutrients to livestock. Linda takes us through the other opportunities they identified in sweet potato farming where livestock farming is concerned. It gives us several income streams. There's the possibility of the tuber. You can eat the tuber as it is. You boil it and eat the tuber. There's the possibility of selling the vines as fodder to dairy farmers. There's the possibility of drying the vine and selling the powder also as additives to the fodder. So sweet potato for us was that's the way we are going to go. We have a farm in uh, Mwea, Kembembe, that uh, we started the multiplication of the vines. From the vines, we came to this piece of land, which is 18 acres least. And uh, that's how we've started with our first block. The plan is to continually produce. So every month we do at least two acres of the vines so that when we start harvesting in January, every month we'll be opening a new block, a new block and ensure continuous production. Once they settled on what to do, there was still more to be done. Any successful business person knows that they need to engage in a thorough research about the field they are venturing in. They need information and knowledge that can be implemented in their businesses among other things. Linda and Wawera had a big part to play, such as identifying location for their farm, among other things. We started it sometimes this year in April. We did uh, everything that we needed, where we wanted to, to start. We did, uh, went into books, read a lot of the farm practices, what is needed, how do you get the maximum crop, where do we get the marketing, and after all that, we started the planting itself. That is where we now are. Among the factors that one needs to consider while settling for a location for business is availability of raw material, nearness to market, basic infrastructure, among other things. For Wawera and Linda, the most ideal thing about the location they settled for was the proximity to a river, which is essential when it comes to irrigating the crops. You, you find in Embu, we have uh, upper Embu and lower Embu. Upper Embu, there is more lean for, but the lads are very small. You need to get a very big chamber to farm on. So one was the availability of lard. Again, there is a river flowing because we don't want to do the rain fed. The rains are erratic. You, you are not, we can't uh, really rely on rain if you want to harvest. And our idea is to harvest every other day. When we start harvesting in January, we have crop for January, we have crop for February, for March, throughout the year. So we needed somewhere where we can irrigate. Then the other thing is that this soil is good, this place is warm, so the crops grow very fast, they mature very fast. Again, labor is available. Sweet potatoes are incredibly versatile and come in hundreds of variety. The most common variety in Kenya are the yellow cream, white and orange fleshed sweet potatoes. Their differences come in color, texture and flavor. The objective of the dual is value addition which made them settle for the perfect variety which is the orange fleshed sweet potatoes. We have the traditional sweet potato that we have grown since when we were young, but we didn't want to go that way. This is the all age fresh sweet potato because it is the best, especially for value addition, because that is where we are looking at. So this is carbonde that we are doing. Inside it is like a carrot and very good when you do the value addition. There is carbonde, there are bungoma, there are several varieties, but that we are doing carbonde right now. Sweet potatoes thrive in warm climates and significant rainfall. They grow best and produce smooth, well-shaped storage roots in a well-prepared soil. Good land or soil preparation involves removal or incorporation of crop debris and any vegetation that may compete with the sweet potato crop or deep manual or mechanical cultivation. Wawera and Linda take us through the land preparation experience which entailed first use of a tractor for intense soil breaking. For tubers, they, they did a, you, you really need to have soft soil because that is how tubers are able to grow. So you need uh, first to, to do the, the harrows, the, the furrows, sorry, that uh, we, we use the tractor. It does the furrows, then we do the planting. From there, you really have to keep the weeds away and you have really to water so that uh, the tubers can grow. Yeah, and then when when the fines are starting start growing, you do the the healing. 
that you heap some soil so that again the, the root can grow and they can have enough soil to make them uh, grow bigger. But we have another two acres somewhere in Kembembe Moya, that is in Kirenyaga, where we did the propagation. We multiplied our finds from there. We harvested also, we have already harvested. We sold it to the local market and uh, it was good. We can't complain. Acquiring a land requires a lot of money depending on the location of the farm. For Linda and Wawera, buying was not an option for the most investment was required in production cost. Wawera advises that leased land is good enough for commercial farmers who may not necessarily own their own land. We, we haven't bought and uh, again you find if we had decided to buy maybe we would have been able to acquire two acres. So for a person who doesn't have enough money, I would identify that uh, you lease so that you can use the rest of the money to do the cultivation itself. Because like if you came here, this land will cost you like 36 million at 2 million per acre. You find that 36 is a, it's not small money. We wouldn't have afforded that, but when it is leasing, it is easier. Maybe you, you can lease for several years, you can buy. But for me, leasing, as long as you get somebody to lease you a lot well, you can make your money from there. At this area you get it at like 3,000 per acre per month. While farmers put a lot of effort in their crop or livestock, they tend to get the least out of it when it comes to the market and it's only through value addition that this trend can be reversed. For a long time, local farmers have been comfortable with the way they have been handling agricultural produce. Most foods have been eaten fresh and any leftovers immediately thrown away. The trend is changing though, and more farmers are becoming more intentional about adding value as value-added agriculture is a worthwhile investment that can generate higher returns, allow penetration of a new potential high-value market, extend the production season, create brand identity, and develop brand loyalty. Value-added agriculture generally focuses on production or manufacturing processes marketing or service that increases the value of primary agricultural produce. For Wawera and Linda, that's their end game. They are purposely producing for value addition and they hope to thrive in that area. With this sweet potato, our initial crop we sold in the local market. With this one, we didn't want to do the value addition. And so we are approaching buyers who want to do the value addition. And why the value addition is because you look like the younger generation. They look at the sweet potatoes like, ah, I want to eat bread. So why don't we look for the person who is processing to make consumption of sweet potato better. So we are looking for people basically who want to do the value addition. That doesn't mean that uh, we won't be selling still to the local market, but we are basically looking. Our interest is more on to people who are doing value addition. And we are also not limiting ourselves. We are saying we are also going that way. Yeah, so that we are able to market not the tubers also, but the final product. It's the flour, we can do the brand and all that. The future goal is to have a, a factory, to have a good bakery where sweet potato can be eaten from morning to supper, you have your snacks, I mean everything you are eating it is sweet potato because uh, for this variety it has a lot of vitamin A, it's also good fiber. Today's young people are the most educated generation ever. Nevertheless, they encounter difficulties in entering and remaining in the labor market. Opportunities for young people to find a job are bound to the general state of the economy and overall employment situation in a country which has led to many of them being jobless. Linda and Wawera are doing their part in job creation as they have provided employment to the locals who come on casual basis and they plan to have even more job opportunities in the future. On our very small value addition space, we have one permanent employee and my partner Wawira Njoe focuses on the value addition part of it. And then on this farm, we are making, on the value addition we are making donuts, we are making chapatis, we are making mandazi, we are making cakes at a bakery located on the outskirts of Embu town. And that is primarily Wawira's space, that is where she best, that's where her strengths are. And then here at the farm, I have a minimum of four people that come in every day. And that's just when it's normal work. 
when it comes to like planting, we need at least eight people per acre. And when it comes to harvesting, we need even more people. And it, you sleep easy at night when you know because of some effort that I put, other people are able to benefit from it. And that's not the end of it. We want to finally also be able to contract other farmers to farm the sweet potatoes for our company, which will also increase employment. It will be a ripple effect from us to the other contracted farmers, to the people who will be working for those contracted farmers, to the people who will supply the finished products, the drivers, the chefs, the people packing. So at the end of the day, we want to create employment also for the youth, for ourselves, and improve the economy of Emboka. We will now be taking a short break, and when we come back, Linda and Mawera will be taking us around their farm to show us more about the farming system they are using.